keeping the focus of a parabola, um, you basically want to put it into one of these two forms. Okay, so you're going to um, complete the square for the part that has the square. So in this case, that's the, we have an x squared. So we're going to complete the square for the x's, and then you're going to kind of put everything else onto the left. Okay, so um, and then you're going to either you're going to calculate p, and you either add it to the um, y coordinate or the x coordinate, depending on which direction your parabola is opening, up or down, or right or left. Okay, so let's kind of look at this particular case, and we'll talk about that as well. So one of the things I would do is go ahead and um, I'd move this x negative x squared and minus 8x to the other side. So you're going to add a positive x squared and add an 8x. And so that's going to leave you with y minus 12, move a little space here, equals x squared plus 8x. And now what we want to do is we want to complete the square for this side so we can rewrite it in terms of a perfect square. So we're going to say plus blank here. We're going to add the same thing over to the left side to keep the equation equal. Okay, so remember what you do is you take this middle term, you take half of it, and then you square it, and that's the number you're going to add to both sides. Okay. Now we can factor this, factor x squared plus 8x plus 16. It, and what happens is when we do that, it allows us to factor this into x plus 4 and x plus 4, which we write as x plus 4 quantity squared. And over here we have um, y plus 4. Okay, so now we can see here that there's no number here, so outside of here. There's nothing multiplied by y. So essentially what you have here is 1 times the quantity of y plus 4. If you wanted to make it look like this, you could do that. Although if I was going to give my, my answer, I'd just write it like this one right here. Okay, but so you can see that this is the same form as this one right here. Um, then I can use this one value here, and that one value is basically the same thing as 4p. See how it's in the same spot? So let's multiply those, well, you're going to say 4p is equal to 1, and then you divide both sides by 4, so you get p is 1 fourth. And so usually I don't necessarily remember this part right here, you can write it down and keep it in your notes. So when you're taking an assessment, you can remember if you need to add P to K or you add it to your H coordinate. What I think here is I look at my equation and I have a Y equals an X squared. And that's kind of the original. It's either opening up or down. Okay. And in this one, I can tell um, if this value is positive here, this 4p value is positive, and p is positive, it's opening up. Okay, so the focus is actually this point right along here, like from the vertex along the axis of symmetry here. And so I can see that that's going in from my vertex up, and that's a y direction. So that reminds me that I need to add the p to the y value of my vertex. Um, so first of all, the vertex here is the point, so my x coordinate is a negative 4, and my y coordinate is a negative 4. And you can see that, remember that there's minuses in your formula, so when you see pluses here, that's actually minus a negative. So our coordinates are negative here. And so then I just need to add 1 fourth on to the y value. Okay, so the focus here is simply the x coordinate of the vertex plus a negative 4 plus 1 fourth, so that's a negative 3 and 3 fourths, or um, if you wrote that as negative 15 over 4, that would be fine as well.
Okay, let's look at another one. So here I can see that the y squareds, I have a y squared, so I'm going to move those over to the other side. So I'm going to be left with an x minus 31 plus blank equals, so I'm going to add 3y to both y squared to both side and add an 18y. Now this one, I can't just take the 18 and divide it in half. Anytime there's a number in front of the y squared or the x for that matter, you always want to common factor those out. So in, I'm going to common factor out the 3 and that leaves me with y squared plus 6y and then I'll say plus blank. Okay, and so x minus 31 plus blank equals this. Okay, so we take half of our 6, and then we square that number, and that's going to give us 9. Now remember, I'm not adding a 9 over here. I'm adding a 3 times 9. So I want to add whatever 3 times 9 is over here, which is, we know is 27. So I'll just write that in there. Okay. Okay. And so now let's go ahead and um, simplify this. So over here we're going to have x minus 4 equals 3 times the quantity. We, we factor this y squared plus 6y plus 9. And that's going to be y plus 3 times y plus 3. Remember, we write this as y plus 3 quantity squared. Okay, now if you remember right from your formula, and maybe you don't, but I'm just going to click back over here. In these formulas, there's no numbers over here in front of the squares, so we need to get rid of those, and they're going to end up kind of giving us this 4p value over here. Sorry. Okay, so we're going to divide both sides by 3. So essentially, this is going to give us one-third times the quantity of x minus 4 equals the quantity of y plus 3 squared. Now remember that this value right here, the one-third, is what our 4p equals. And so now I'm going to divide both sides by 4, which is, a, which is the same as multiplying by one-fourth. So you'll get p is one-twelfth. Okay. Now this is an x equals y squared graph, so it e either opens left or right. And I know that, remember, this p-value is positive, or this value right here is positive, so it's opening up to the right. Which means my vertex is a point right around about right there. And so I want you to think about that. It's moving in the x direction. So I'm going to add my p-value to the x-coordinate of my vertex. Okay, so whatever the vertex is, you, I'm going to add 1 12th to the x-coordinate. So let's see what our vertex is. So over here the x-coordinate is 4 and the y-coordinate is a negative 3. And so I can think of 4 as um, 48 over 12, so that's 49 over 12 and a negative 3. Oops. And that's the focus.